Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we're going to be discussing the lone Catholic to sign the Declaration of Independence. Today's founder is Charles Carroll of Carrollton. Now this video is a bit of a follow-up video to yesterday's where I discussed his cousin, John Carroll, who was the first Archbishop in the United States. And I'll put a link right up here uh, and in the description if you'd like to learn more about John Carroll because I went into in depth to uh, the role of Catholics in the Revolutionary War. Now today, since that was a very long video, we're going to try and keep it short today and give you a brief uh, history of the life of Charles Carroll. Now Charles Carroll of Carrollton added of Carrollton to his name because there were several Charleses in the greater Carroll family living in Maryland at the time. Uh, like his cousin, Charles Carroll went to France for his education because that's where Catholics like to be educated as opposed to London where Catholicism was kind of looked down on. Although I will add that I forgot to, I left this out yesterday, uh, actually in Maryland, in colonial Maryland, even though it was a hotbed of Catholicism, it was still illegal for Catholics to hold office. So Charles Carroll lives in France for quite a while, and he comes back just in time for the Stamp Act. Uh, and he really is an avid opponent of the Stamp Act and becomes a patriot leader. And eventually he starts to sit on the Committee of Safety. And when a revolutionary assembly is called together for the state of Maryland, Charles Carroll is actually the first Catholic ever to hold public office in the state of Maryland. And to my knowledge, to hold public office of any nature in the United States uh, during this early period. Not ever, of course. There was a John F. Kennedy, if I'm not mistaken, at one point. Um, but, uh, so Charles Carroll is breaking ground at this point. Now, he's not sent to the First Continental Congress because he is so radical so early, and a lot of people aren't ready for it. However, he does get elected to the Second Continental Congress. Unfortunately, he gets there after the vote on independence, but he's one of many states, after independence was declared, many states decided to send in new delegates who were more radical, who were more on board with independence. And Charles Carroll was one of these people, so although he missed that vote, he did show up in time to sign the Declaration of Independence on August 2nd with the rest of the team. So, Carroll goes on to have a long list of service. As mentioned yesterday, he goes with Benjamin Franklin and his cousin John up to Quebec to try and get the Canadians to join the American Rebellion. And that's not successful, but he does then get appointed to be a member of the Board of War, which was the body that oversaw more or less George Washington and made sure he was keeping the war on the right track. They also helped, uh, you know, organize supplies and, and just operate the war in general from an administrative standpoint. So, uh, Carroll did go, uh, he would continue in the Maryland colonial, uh, I'm sorry, state assembly for decades, almost 20 years, and he was also elected to the inaugural United States Senate. And I'll remind you, at this time, there were only 13 states, and there's two senators from each state, then as now, so out of the 26 original people to sit in the United States Senate, Charles Carroll of Carrollton was one of these people. I really love his name because it's got his last name and the town he's from, which is named after his family, Charles Carroll of Carrollton. The last thing you always have to throw out here if you're talking about Charles Carrollton, and if you know this name from before this video, this is probably why you know him. Charles Carroll of Carrollton uh, died at the age of 95 in 1832. And when he did, he was the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence. It had been 50, uh, let's say six years since the signing, and he passed away. And with him went all living bodies who had touched that document with a pen. I shouldn't say touched it. Uh, so that's the life of Charles Carroll. Like I said, I want to keep it short today because yesterday's video ran a little bit long. Um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the, in the comments below. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them in the below. I have new lighting I'm working on. I think I need to put one over here. So let me know. Uh, please hit like, please subscribe. I'm Jason. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow.